Hi everyone, welcome to the energy update for June. But also, I really wanted to actually put this one out on the 22nd of May because I really feel the energies of 22nd of May, 23rd of May, towards the end of May are really pivotal in getting the best out of your June uh, energy that's surrounding you. So just want to talk about the number 22. And from a numerology point of view, I just looked this up on Google and Google says, number 22 in numerology signifies that you have the strength to not only withstand life's adversity, but also transform them into opportunities for personal growth and spiritual development. 22 is one of the master numbers of inner power, ability to affect change. The ability to affect change. And I think for the rest of this year, this is really setting the tone for the rest of this year because we're in a time of enlightenment. We're in a time where uh, the universal cosmic energies um, are supplying an answer to Gaia's call really. So her core is changing, her heartbeat is changing, changing human resonance. Uh, the field of the ionosphere is changing, everything is changing in this planet. And if you remember that you are entrained with Mother Earth, your heartbeat reacts to her beat within her, then it just makes sense, it just makes absolute sense that we are in a transformative time. And there are things we can help ourselves with to make this time easier and going with the flow than resisting it and fighting it. So 22, master number, make what you may of that. Um, we're releasing this on the 22nd, so hopefully some of you will take advantage of some of the qualities of that day that you can um, use for your own personal joy in life. Okay, so then we come on to the 23rd of May, which is the flower full moon. A lot of our full moons are named uh, really from the names of Native American traditions around the world. And flower moon is, as the name suggests, uh, when many of the flowers in spring really got going. So flowers are usually a softening. They're usually a, a bringing uh, qualities of beauty, um, of wow, of awe, of relaxation most of the time. And um, it's also called the hair moon and various other names across the world. This one is at 157, 8, something like that, uh, British summertime and um, so it's, the, it's in the daytime, so it'll be really lit up again on the 22nd and the 23rd and into the 24th of May. And it holds quite a lot of amazing alignments with our planetary uh, constellations out there. Jupiter's involved, Uranus is involved, Neptune's involved, Venus is involved. And for anybody who doesn't know anything at all about those planets, the fact that they're all hanging out together during that full moon means that we get qualities thick and fast, which are all about you focusing on your personal joy, your celebration, your um, uh, kindness, bringing in things that are, that are inspirational, bringing in hope, bringing in uh, qualities of life that you really, really, really want to go for. It brings in love, it brings in inspiration and so many good qualities, any good quality that you can think of around um, fun times, inspiration. Uh, also, it gives a lot of strength. This moon is all about strength as well, and it'll help you in the weeks and the month ahead. Guy has basically said for June, 
the banner name is serenity okay so during the month of june if you can carve out any time to link into that word and its meaning and its feeling anything to do with serene and serenity but we have been given notice if you like that what that means is a lot of the collective energies around the world are shedding old skin they're really they're really into renewal and we are shedding our own skin so there's um I mean, some of you will have seen the Northern Lights recently, that we've got a lot more solar activity at the moment. And um, even here, we'll put up a picture in a moment, uh, we're in North Devon and we saw it uh, one of the evenings in May, uh, May the 11th was it? And uh, magnificent, absolutely magnificent to see this solar show of light. And many of us believe that there are light codes, there's information, there's qualities. You can't actually argue about the fact that there's a lot of frequencies, at least, coming through during those times for humanity's good. They're in assistance to our evolution and our cosmic jumps of time and space that we're making at the moment. Now, for some of us, that the, these energies just floor us. For some sensitives and empaths, we just want to sleep and sleep and sleep. If that affects you in that way, as there's more coming in time, just give it over to the sleep. But what you will find is when you've slept and when you've gone with the rest that's required to assimilate and align with these higher frequency uh, light codes that are coming down, you'll also get invigorated by it and you'll get enchanted by it and you'll get inspired by the energies subsequent to that. So it's almost like we need to be knocked out in a way <laughs> to sleep through some of them, to be able to assimilate them. So then as we walk barefoot on the earth and we get some of that energy through to Gaia and from Gaia, then we actually really benefit magnificently by them. So you might wanna, you might wanna follow what you feel like at the time, just do that as a priority. And then, yeah, then name some of the benefits that you get from it as time goes on. So that's the solar activity that's coming through. So really, we're relinquishing the old. So to move into serenity, you need to have really paid attention to what I call the pain body. So really pay attention when, you know, when you get triggered, um, when you get sort of, uh, you end up in a funk and you don't quite know why or, or, or things just surprise you, but in a bit of a negative way, that's your pain body saying, do you know what? We've got enough light and enough love and enough gorgeousness now in this world to absolutely take that off your menu of experience. Now, all stories are really important and very, very valid. And we're not giving, you know, we're not, we're really counting that story in but choosing to acknowledge that it's so powerful and so life-changing that you now have the equipment necessary to allow yourself to feel different about that particular event or events in time. Allowing yourself to feel different about the events of a past experience. So um, there are many different ways of getting help with this to release triggers, to uh, embody um, a different view, to get the perspective by moving physical space in our minds or physically to view it from a different angle, which gives us freedom that helps us to release unburden, unravel away from the pain, uh, to let go of our standing or our views of ourself within that story. No matter how real it appears, it is in the past. So anything that you can do to actually really get into the present moment with that loving, serenity, unfolding, freedom, um, any, anything you can do at all to assist yourself making little small stepping stones or walloping great 
strides in that direction will assist you moving into this serene energy that's going to be here really from the 28th of May all the way through very strongly to the 16th of June and then it goes through till about the 3rd of July but on a different level. Um, so it's a bit more um, widespread uh, for the back end of, of June. So, so whenever I get this thing like serenity, my heart just lifts and the hope is restored and I think, yay! But I'm also very aware that there's, you know, if that particular frequency isn't in our life at the moment, that we're going to need to change in order to access it. So our need to change, our call to change is from the 22nd of May to take that strength, to take that leadership role, to take all that the 22 number gives you and definitely on the 23rd. You know, the number 23 uh, within numerology is, is literally the royal star of the lion. It's the royal star of the lion. So to have a full moon that is just so astonishingly bright at the moment, it's unbelievable. So it's going to light up if anybody likes moon bathing, go outside and have a little bit of bathe under the moon and the stars. That would be amazing if the light is right for you. Um, but, you know, it's going to highlight anything that we have in our shadow side so that it can almost like if you think of it as being kissed better you're going to be kissed better <laughs> from the 22nd of may right the way through june and into july take it and receive it as a loving gesture from the universe and the frequency there's are going to hug you better and kiss you better and if you allow yourself to receive any frequency of love in any direction um, that can assist you in leveling up to the vibes and the frequencies of serenity, it will be like the biggest higher heart healing we've had so far on this journey. It's extraordinarily powerful. The light of the sun and the light of the moon and the particular planets that are with us at the moment all say, look at the joy, look at the freedom look at being liberated from one's own mind, heart and soul. Look at the liberation that you can actually achieve by turning your focus onto love. I was talking today to a dear friend and we were talking about triggers and how, you know, they come unexpectedly and they're big and they're deep. The, the bigger they are and the deeper they are, the more ready it is set to actually transform into something else. It's just the pain body being much louder, so you give it the attention it needs, so it can be changed by you, for you, with you. And it did occur to me that there is, you know, if, if we get triggered at all by uh, what one might call um, a traumatic event or uh, whatever, uh, words feel right for you. Um, we can also be triggered into any time in life we've had a bliss moment. We can also be triggered into any time when we've belly laughed so much that we've had tears running for ages and we get aches in our stomach. We can also be triggered by um, romance of love. We can also be triggered by love itself. So it might be worth having a look at that and choosing to set up some triggers of bounty. Set up some triggers for yourself. Triggers are basically where you would uh, feel the feeling and make that feeling really grow. The sounds that are associated with a happy memory, the feeling, the smells, the sights, how your voice changes with a happy, 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 wholesome memory. And then just put, just press part of your body, maybe on your wrist, maybe on the back of your hand, maybe on your neck, maybe on your shoulder. And then at times when you need to be triggered into a positive state, you touch that part of your body and you welcome the triggering state of whatever it is you've chosen and you choose to emulate and to sit within. So remember, we do have choices even in the 
darkest of times, there, are, there is light being provided now all around the world for every single human being. And it starts on the 22nd of May, big time. 23rd, it's like bigger. <laughs> and as we go through the whole thing, it leads to, if we can use that light to relinquish our attention on the shadow, to relinquish our feeding of that wolf on our shoulder of the shadow rather than the light. In no way are we diminishing and ignoring our story and in no way are we forgetting about it. We're just loving ourselves into a different space that provides something opposite to the often stranglehold that some of these uh, traumas have led us into staying within. So I understand that this information um, will be uh, understood by many and it might be a bit triggering in itself. Um, and that's okay too. I'm doing this with as much loving intent, harmony and hope as I can possibly muster. Because as leaders in our own life now, we do get to choose um, how we move through this stuff and how much we stay in it and how much we actually find a way through it. And honoring our pain body, honoring the story is a really big part of it. Listening to what our shadow side is trying to help us with is a massive part of it. You know that ego shadow side, it's never there trying to harm you. It's just trying to keep you safe. So the story that's coming from that aspect of your being knows no better. It doesn't know any better from the story that you've already lived. So even if the story that you've lived so far is majorly traumatic, the shadow ego side tries to keep you in it because it doesn't know any better. It thinks that maybe some other new venture is even worse. So why don't we just stay here? Let's stay here. Whereas the light body knows that you are deserving of that thriving life, that you're deserving of the full embodiment of light that you've been here, you've chosen to be here to actually live and absolutely grasp it and make the best of it. So my love to you now and always, um, I will pull one card uh, just for us, for this whole time frame that we've mentioned so far. Just need to pick that up. <laughs> hmm. Okay. So this is Rebecca's Campbell's light cards. And for everybody who sees this video, feels this message of hope, of love, of joy, of enthralling activity. Our card is Star Keeper. So there's the picture. And the message here is cosmic, of cosmic proportions. So to me that means let's pay attention to those planets that are around at the moment and their meanings and their assistance with humanity's evolution at this time. Ancestor, calling on all ancestors of all time and space to be with us, to assist us in our pathway. And then it says, seed the light by staying grounded. Cosmic ancestors, so really massive picture. So anybody who's shifting darkness into light so that we have a beautiful harmony, including the darkness, to include the light more, to assist in your harmonics. And then seed the light by staying grounded. You know, it's incredible, isn't it? I mean, really, Gaia has always said to me that every human being is like an antennae for the light. And she needs us on this planet and she's loving us as much as she can and nurturing us. But every light code we take, every time, you know, uh, we have an intention 
to do this grounding of light codes. We take it in through our bodies and then we put it into the earth. You know, that's how energy is measured. It's taken from, um, if you like, in the Native American culture, it's Mother Earth, Father Sun, or Mother Earth, Father Sky. So it's the male and the female, and it's a combination of both. And we take one energy through the soles of our feet and the other energy through our crown into the body, into earth, from the earth, through the body, up to the heavens. So this dynamic is happening all of the time. But basically here, I take that as, yeah, receiving as much light as possible from all the events we've mentioned so far and earthing it, allowing the Gaia to actually share in this amazing adventure of life that we're on. Okay, my loves, I'll see you soon. Bye for now. <laughs>